TV Recap here. Today, we'll be talking about American Horror Story Season 1 episode titled The Naughty List. American Horror Stories is an anthology series of standalone episodes that delve into horror myths, legends, and lore. The episode starts with Zinn introducing the Bro House. It is a reality streaming show featuring his other influencer friends Wyatt, James, and Barry. They do tons of crazy things in the house where the four of them live. The influencers introduce themselves one by one. They each explain what they do and where they came from. Five days before Christmas, the four influencers hang around a place called the Suicide Bridge. They soon spot someone that is planning to jump on the bridge. Barry suggests calling the police instead of watching someone kill himself. Zinn refuses and says that the police won't get there in time. He then tells Barry to film the whole incident. Wyatt then rushes over and says that the person is about to jump. Barry reluctantly agrees to start recording. Zinn starts to explain the situation on the camera. As he finishes, he joins James and Wyatt in chanting Bro House in front of the camera. The person on the bridge finally jumps. Barry appears to have doubts about recording the whole incident. Barry tells Zinn that they couldn't post what they just shot. Zinn asks why not and tells him that it can get them a million followers. Barry argues that it can also lead to a huge backlash. Zinn ignores this and does not change his decision. The group then decides to go to where the man landed. Barry initially declines but is eventually forced to go with the group. Later during a Christmas party, Zinn still tries to convince Barry to post the recorded incident. Barry explains that this type of content only spells trouble. Zinn then tells him that they are aging out of their career. He continues, saying they need to do this to keep living the good life. Zinn makes Barry promise to get his mojo back and the bro house needs his voice. Barry then agrees to work on it. Zinn tells Barry that he knows what he is doing. He then turns around and slides down the stairs. Halfway through, Zinn records himself jumping onto the Christmas tree. Everyone at the party laughs as they all enjoy themselves. Later, the DJ lets the crowd know that the Bro House will be uploading new content. A countdown commences as everyone looks forward to the upload. The crowd grows silent as the video starts. Zinn, James, and Wyatt express their excitement about the viewers' reactions. This, however, does not go as well as they wanted. The audience sees the video about a man jumping to his death. They then see the influencers cheer while recording the incident. The crowd grows even more silent as the video ends. One by one, the people at the party start leaving. It turns out that this was not the content that they expected. They show signs of disgust as they see themselves out. The next day, the influencers talk about how bad things turned out. Zinn reads out some of the negative comments the people made online. He then says that Barry was right. Wyatt then says that the people will forget everything by tomorrow. To this, Barry responds that they won't. He then shares that people petition to get their channel shut down. This petition is already at 400,000 signatures, he continues. Barry then tells them that the family of the man who jumped will be having a press conference. Everyone agrees that this is bad for them. The group starts to discuss their options. Barry suggests they apologize to the family to avoid further backlash. Zinn disagrees and says that everyone who does that gets bashed even more. Instead, he recommends making new content that caters to the LGBTQ community. The group is split in half about this suggestion. As they start arguing, they hear a sound outside. They hurriedly check on the commotion and find their things taken away. Zinn tries to argue with the person in charge. He then gets told that their contract was suspended. This means that the promotional materials will be taken away. As their Lamborghini is seized, the group decides to do the LGBTQ content. After uploading their new content, they still did not see any changes. Their followers continue to decrease. Barry comments that they are down another 50,000 subs. He then says that a little more and they will lose monetization. The influencers then think about their roots and what they did before the fame. Barry tells the group to do what they used to do and just be funny. Zinn and the others agree as they drive away. The scene cuts to the group going around the mall. Barry reminds Zinn of the reason why they are there. Zinn agrees and tells him to start recording. The group then goes to Santa after seeing him. The group first talks to the girl dressed as an elf at the entrance. They start poking fun at her. Barry shows his dislike as the group starts making inappropriate remarks at her. The commotion further escalates as they make fun of a person posing as another elf. People around them tell them that they are being rude. The three influencers ignore the remarks while Barry continues recording. The people start calling for security. Zinn then starts heading towards Santa while calling everybody's attention. He tells the kids that Santa does not exist. He continues mocking Santa while talking to the camera. Santa looks at Zinn and tells him to leave. Zinn ignores Santa and starts dancing in front of him. The group records Zinn making fun of Santa in front of everyone. Angered, Santa pushes Zinn and knocks him down. The group is shocked by Santa's reaction as they keep recording. 
Santa then points at Zin and tells him that he will get what he deserves. James notices the security coming, so he tells the group to go. The influencers continue recording as they leave. The group provokes the mall cops while running away. Santa stares at the influencers as they run away. On Christmas Eve at the bro house, the group posts the recording from earlier. Barry uploads the video while voicing out his concerns. Everyone else ignores this and urges him to just upload it. Barry points out what they did wrong. Wyatt then suggests that Barry may no longer fit the bro house because of his attitude. He then tells Barry to leave the bro house. Barry answers that they all might need to move out soon because of their situation. As Wyatt and Barry start to argue, Zinn breaks them up. He reminds them that they shouldn't be fighting because they are bros. Negative comments on the video they uploaded then start coming in. The group sees the number of followers keep on decreasing. Wyatt opens the fridge and looks for some beer. He then asks if they are out of beer. James tells him that there is another case in the garage. As Wyatt leaves, he breaks an empty beer bottle on the wall. Zinn then gets a call from the police. He gets asked about the incident at the mall. The police officer explains that the Santa from earlier was not the man hired for the job. She tells Zinn that the original Santa was murdered in his apartment. Zinn first doesn't believe this and calls the guys. The police officer then advises him to come to the station the next day. She tells Zinn that they will need the video to identify the killer. The officer notes that this may not be the first time for the killer. The scene then focuses on the dismembered corpse stuffed into a gift box. The corpse is implied to be the original mall Santa. Zinn says nothing back as he ends the call. The scene then changes to Wyatt walking into the garage. As he opens the fridge, he sees a camera taped inside. Wyatt wonders what the camera is doing there. Before he can investigate, someone grabs him from behind. A person dressed as Santa grabs Wyatt and bangs his head into the refrigerator. He then starts to twist Wyatt's neck until it snaps. All of this happens in front of the camera. Wyatt drops dead and the screen fades to black. Upstairs, Zinn explains what he learned from the police officer to the group. James does not believe him and thinks that this is just a prank. Zinn answers that they'll find out after going to the precinct the next day. Barry gets the laptop to see the killer's face again. The group leans over and agrees that the suspect does not look right. The influencers then see that someone uploaded a video on their account. Zinn finds this puzzling since they are the only ones that can do that. Barry agrees and says that it is indeed impossible. The uploaded video shows Wyatt getting his neck snapped in front of the fridge. The group is shocked and wonders if the video is real. James assumes that Wyatt is just pranking them. Zinn agrees and decides to go downstairs to talk to Wyatt. As Zinn leaves, Barry says he is going to delete the video. James asks him to wait after seeing the likes and comments pouring in. Barry still deletes the video, saying that it is sick. The video comes back right after getting deleted. Barry tells James that he does not know who reposted the video. A link then catches their attention. Barry clicks on the link and sees an article from the York Explorer Daily. Curious, the two start reading the article. Downstairs, Zinn looks for Wyatt while telling him that they saw the video. He continues, saying that posting a video like that should be a group decision. Zinn opens the fridge and sees no camera inside. A sudden thud then gets his attention. Back upstairs, Barry and James continue reading the article from earlier. The article is about the legend surrounding Santa Claus. It says that according to scholars, Santa Claus is not based on Saint Nicholas or any other saint. The article further explains that Santa is based on the ancient tales of the Wild Man. James finds the name Wild Man to be ridiculous. Barry continues to explain that the Wild Man is a pagan god. This pagan god wears animal skins and a hideous painted face. The Wild Man is also a fierce hunter who punishes evil people. The story's changed over time and he is now known to simply be Santa Claus. Outside of the house, Zinn continues to look for Wyatt. He then stops after seeing someone dressed as Santa in front of him. It gets revealed that it is the killer from earlier. Zinn asks the person about Wyatt but gets no answer. He warns the man that he will call the cops. The killer ignores Zinn's threats and pulls out a club. He then walks towards Zinn and starts hitting him. Barry and James hear someone screaming. Barry says that Zinn and Wyatt are just pranking them for more followers. Barry says that it is probably Zinn's idea. Zinn weakly opens his eyes and sees the killer wrapping him with Christmas lights. The killer then shoves leaves into Zinn's mouth. Zinn apologizes as he gets dragged towards the swimming pool. The killer hums a Christmas song while looking at Zinn. The killer then throws him into the swimming pool. Zinn gets electrocuted and dies in the pool. The power goes out inside the house, and James starts to panic. He says that the guy from the mall might be the one responsible. James calls 911 but is not taken seriously. Barry checks out his phone and sees another video online. This time, they see Santa throwing Zinn into the swimming pool. It gets implied that Zinn dies after getting electrocuted afterward. James gets frightened and tells Barry that they should leave the house. Barry says that they can't leave the other guys. James says that the guys might already be dead. As Barry and James try to leave, they suddenly hear a loud banging on the door. Then, they hear a deep voice saying, Ho ho ho! The power goes back up and a Christmas song starts playing. James tells Barry that he is scared and hugs him. The two exit the house and head for the car. James is suddenly hit by a crossbow bolt straight through his hand. This gets him stuck on the car's hood. 
Barry looks up and sees Killer Santa. James yells and asks Barry for help. Barry tries to get up, but Santa continues shooting at them. He then gets his leg hit by a bolt. James continues crying and calling for help. Santa then shoots him through his mouth, killing him. Shocked, Barry moves back and crawls back to the house. Inside the house, Barry sits in front of the fireplace. He groans in pain as he pulls the bolt out of his leg. He then pulls out his phone and sees that the bolt went through it too. Barry pulls one of the socks hanging on the fireplace to cover his wounds. He then hears footsteps on the roof. Barry shouts that he has a gun. Barry's attention then turns toward his laptop. He limps towards the table and tries to ask for help on the comment section of their video. Unfortunately, no one believes him. Footsteps return and Barry looks at the fireplace. He comments how ironic it is if Santa goes down the chimney. He then crawls back to the fireplace and tries to close it. Killer Santa starts pouring gasoline through the shaft. Barry panics and starts crawling away. As he does this, their channel suddenly gets a notification. He turns the laptop over and sees that they now have 5 million subscribers. Barry rejoices after seeing the number of followers that they now have. He shouts that they did it and says it is a Christmas miracle. As Barry celebrates, Killer Santa lights a matchstick and drops it from the chimney. The scene then jumps to a burning Barry running towards the pool. He reaches the swimming pool but dies soon after. Barry's body floats lifelessly as Silent Night plays in the background. The next day, fire trucks are seen rushing over to the bro house. Firemen start cleaning up the damages. A police detective looks around and checks out the aftermath of the incident. This is the same detective who called Zinn earlier. The detective covers her nose as she sees a Christmas tree trimmed with dismembered body parts of the four guys. Somewhere else, the killer finds and targets a new mall Santa. His deep voice says ho ho ho. And the episode ends. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel. Thank you.